Welcome everyone to another edition of BTP Daily. And you know what? I'm going to switch this a little bit more because the other day I, I, I had an interview that I happened to read with Tim Ream over at The Guardian. And he talks about the preconceived notions of the American footballer in England, in the Premier League, in the Championship, in England in general, I guess I should say. It would make it a little bit more justifiable and not just keep it under one particular uh, category, if you will. Uh, he talks about how, how Americans are seen. But you know what really was left out? And you can't, I'm not sure if, if it's the interviewer or, or, or Tim himself that really doesn't go into it. What did you have to go to get through? to get to England, whether it's a Premier League team, Championship team, whatever it may be. And I think that's where the, the English media and the English audience over in the UK doesn't understand what the American player has to go through in order to get where they are. Uh, some pretty much have a, a good, uh, I guess you could say a good platform, a good marquee to be able to present themselves to go abroad. But for the most part, the American player does not have that at their disposal. Let's be, let's be completely honest. Right now, in this phase of history in football in the United States, Major League Soccer is not a league that is going to export players. It is a league that imports players. And, and that's pretty much the story of it. I mean, very rarely will you hear a player from Major League Soccer going to another league as as they're sold. I mean, usually the ratio, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I'll throw it's usually about five, six to one coming in instead of going out. And if those players don't end up playing in Major League Soccer, they end up playing in, in the farm, in the affiliate system, which is the, the farm teams in United Soccer League in, in USL. Uh, the team of the affiliate teams and, and some of the independent teams that are, are within that structure or below. What the English audience doesn't understand is how much of a plight it is for the American player to be able to have a chance to go abroad. And it's changing now a little bit more because players are leaving younger and going to academy systems in Germany, in England in Spain. So, so I mean that that kind of is changing in, in in a certain aspect but for the opportunity to be seen to have that chance to go across there is a lot of money that needs to be spent. Um I, I put on my Twitter handle on my Twitter page pretty much one particular experience of a player that had to spend nearly $50,000 US and forgive me if I if I'm wrong on my calculation I'm just doing it off the top of my head that's about almost 45,000 quid that they're spending in order to play football. I don't know about you, but I don't know of many footballers in England that are spending kids, I'm talking about youngsters, teenagers at the youth level that have to spend that much money to play football. In many other countries, that's, I guess you could say ludicrous. That happens only here in the United States, where kids have to pay up to five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a year to be at a team and play. So what what does that what happens there? It's not just the story of Tim Ream and that what he's had to do in order to get to where he is. It's the story of the ones that didn't or couldn't or had no chance to do it because they didn't have the money or the resources at their disposal to be able to do something like that. I think that story needs to be told more within the English press. So that I guess that stigma, that, that reputation, that stereotype of the American player starts to, to reduce a little bit more. And, and that's what, what I'm, I'm trying to see if, if we can do. Because in England, despite everything else that's going on, the Premier League revenue sharing, all the other things that are going on, the grassroots, the most basic aspect of football in that country is still in a popular context. There's still a popular notion of what the game is all about. Meanwhile, here in the United States, it's become more of an elitist type of of uh, of game, where it's only if, if you're more affluent that you have better chances of playing the game, and you have better chances of being seen by the top elite youth teams, the elite, the premier, all those that, that use those, those little catchphrases, those little keywords that, you know, kind of become 
uh, the little shiny object for the fish, for the fish meaning the parents, that end up having those decisions of where their kid has to play or doesn't want them to play. That's what ends up happening. And here in the United States, it's a very elitist game. So when you have really talented players that don't have very you know, good deal of money, then you know what happens. And that what usually happens is that either the kids aren't able to advance to the next level, they end up quitting the game, or even worse nowadays, they end up playing for the national team of their parents' heritage. And then that usually ends up being uh, a means for the media, for some in the media, I should say, for many fans, and for many that follow the game even casually, to say, well, that kid's a traitor. So when in England you start to see an American player start understanding some of the things that they've had to endure in order to get where they are, regardless of where they are, but also for that one player, also think about 10,000 others that because they could not afford the opportunities that were given to that one player that's over in, in, in England or Germany or, or wherever it may be, Think of those that didn't make it and start saying, you know what, there might be a few more that were better than them. Guys, don't forget, please, 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 please to subscribe to Beyond the Pitch over on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, wherever you may be consuming your your podcasts or your audio content, subscribe to Beyond the Pitch as Phil and I will continue to give you the best that there is to offer, the best pundits, players, voices of the game that will be able to enlighten you and give you a more worldly knowledge of what's going on in the beautiful game. So make sure you do that over on whatever platform. It doesn't matter. But also, if you do go in and you have to rate us, Make sure you do so. Leave your comments. Let us know what you think and what we should do better and what we could do better. One star is great. That's all good. Five stars, you guys become otherworldly. Thank you so much for your support because remember, if it ain't for you guys, we're not doing this. All right? Talk to you later. Peace.